Hi, I'm Avery Kaplan, Features Editor at Comics Beat, and I'm super excited to be joined today by executive producers Mike McMahon, Josh Bicell, and Sydney Ryan for Solar Opposites Season 5. Um, my first question is for Mike. Has Solar Opposites' narrative evolved in ways you would have been surprised by at the start? I didn't know they'd let us get away with um, making Terry and Corvo so freaking horny for each other. They are off the charts horny. I'm pretty sure... You know how they do those like V-chip things in the corner of it where it's like, a, you know, sex or violence or something. I think they're going to have to add an H for for off the charts horniness. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think like we have fun with these characters. We love that they love each other. And I love that we have like a a very out gay family, gay couple with kids and that that is the least subversive thing about this show, that that is the most normal thing. And getting to write them like that and getting to write all the alien hijinks. Like I think in the first seasons, we kind of were like a little more cautious and careful. And then at some point it was like, we just like, we're like, fuck it. Let's do whatever the fuck we want. Let's let them be in love. Let's let them be crazy. And once we did that, like just the storytelling and the comedy, just it, it, it felt so natural and good. So I, I'm surprised by, by how far we've been able to push everything in this show with the wall and, and, their relationship and the types of jokes and the genre changes and, and the holiday specials, like it really does feel like we're getting away with a really funny crime. Okay, I have a somewhat related question next for Josh. Um, what is the most memorable note you have ever received on an episode of Solar Opposite? <laughs> oh my God. He can't say Honestly, it. <laughs> I don't think, I can't say it. I really, I cannot say it. Um, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to spin your, your question like a politician would and say, truly Hulu and 20th have been great partners and really not given us a lot of notes. And the notes they've given are always incredibly helpful. And even Disney legal, who we make their jobs way harder every day, um, <laughs> is a great partner for us. No, uh, notes are usually about don't, don't mention Star Wars. We don't want to ruin uh one of pop culture's number one all-time things with your dirty little show uh but yeah i would i would uh not be working after this if i said what the actual <laughs> note was we've never that being said we've never not been able to do something we want to do we've never not been able to make a joke we want to do i think like really legal just has our backs so that we don't have to be sitting in court for like some sort of uh lawsuit you know but like ultimately they actually work with us. They they get the show and are fans of the show. Like we'll get a call, we'll get a notes call from everybody just being laughing. And they're like, okay, clearly we can't do this, but let's figure <laughs> out what we can do so you guys can do what you want. Which is, I mean, that's the dream working relationship. That is really fantastic. Um, Sydney, I'm curious, what Solar Opposites merch would you like to see made widely available to fans? Ooh, good question. I think we need more merch in general, just like better quality. Like we just started working with Toddland. So now we have some like actual, like uh, nice, like really nice shirts and like stuff I would wear. Um, whereas like, you know, sometimes we have the stuff where it's just like splattered all on the front. And I'm like, I don't want to wear that, but I like the more simple stuff. Like if they were to just make a t-shirt with like an embroidered pupa right here, just like a little, like maybe even like a polo or something, it would just something nice where you can show off your love for the show but not have it be like how about a corvo the alien cod piece that people could wear around <laughs> it's just like hanging off of them and people are like nice cod piece and they're like it's solar opposites really no, i want just simple awesome merch that i would wear every day you heard it here first sydney wants a cod <laughs> i think is what she said that's what she's saying <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go back to Mike for this one. Um, how did holiday specials become a Solar Opposites tradition? You know, I'll tell you, the real story is uh, we were making second season and we wrote the season so fast. We were having so much fun and Hulu was so happy that we actually had a couple extra weeks of the writers at the end of it. And I just called them and was like, can we add an extra episode? Like, we have time to write it and I really want to do a holiday episode. And they were like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, and so we did it and it was such a blast and so well received that because Solar Opposites is a celebration of watching TV that like, you know, we are, we're like the Simpsons if you let Itchy and Scratchy take over half of the show, you know what I mean? And like, like Josh and I are talking all the time with the writers about like, we want to start in normal places 
that could be on any family sitcom, you know, and then take it to an insane solar opposites place. And that's the same thing with the, the holiday episodes is the feeling of we grew up being like, Hey, you know, it's time for Treehouse of horror or, Hey, it's, it's Christmas, you know, time to watch those five Christmas specials. We all watch every year. Uh, and honestly, I, not only do we like doing the holiday specials, but like it lets us kind of like put in a different mindset and get to do something really creative in a different theme, which you don't really get to do on everything. So we love doing those. It's really fun. We did a Halloween episode. I, yeah. And, I also think practically wise, because our show drops all at once, it's a great way. So it's not a year before the audience, our audience gets to see another episode. So yeah. we, we sort of strategically do it. So, Hey, the episode drops, we actually, ironically, we'll have, we had the Valentine's Day special in Valentine's Day. Now we'll have 10 more, uh, 12 more episodes and then a 11 more episodes and then a, a you know, uh, a Halloween. So it's a chance for us to really um, make sure that our audience is connected to the show still. Um, Sydney, is there anything you can tease about the upcoming Halloween special tip for us? Tease them, um, Sid. It's, I mean, it's a direct sequel to the last Halloween special, which is really fun because it is two years later. Um, and it does follow the kind of rules of the Santa Claus, the Tim Allen movie. Yeah. So they just get into, you know, normal hijinks and like Corvo ignoring what's happening to him. And uh, it's just a fun, really fun family episode that gets extremely wild. Well, we can't wait for that. Um, I'm going to sneak in one last question here for everyone. What is the ideal snack to accompany a viewing of Solar Opposites? Um, <laughs> I know the ideal thing you can inhale while watching uh, Solar Opposites would be marijuana. But uh, for snack, I don't know. What do you think? Bugles? I feel like we're a bugle. I show. mean, the problem is, is we also make make weird snacks. So it would have to be like, uh, it would have to be like, um, it would be like caramel flavored bugles. Like we always love to combine two things that you would never ever eat. Um, you could just fry up a parrot, just eat a ew. fried parrot while watching. No, Sid, you're not into oh. fried parrot? All right, I'll stick with bugles then. Maybe parrot flavored <laughs> bugles. Sydney, do you have any specific thoughts on that? I would say whatever the pupa, what was the pupa snack from 306? The oh, like pups. Num -num? What are they called? Oh, the num nums. No, num -num. they taste yeah. like the tip of a penguin's dick. Nobody wants those, remember? I don't know. We said canonically, yeah, num nums taste like the unwashed tip of a penguin's penis. Okay, then I don't want those. Okay. It okay, does like so, those purple puffs, though. The puff. So avoid the num nums. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Solar Opposite Season 5 should be streaming on Hulu now when you're watching this, so go watch that next. Um, and be sure and tune in for the Halloween special later this year. Thank you oh, so much for joining hey, us. Avery, hold on a second. I'm hearing they should watch it three times in a row. Yeah. Three so, times? Oh, well, like, yeah. I mean, they should maybe just four. Be watch. Yes. Oh, you can watch Solar Opposites four times in a row. Nobody can stop you. Also, I mean, that's your amazing. Cats love, your cats love to watch it when you leave the house. That's true. I've heard that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been Thank absolutely you. wonderful.